slam it goes to this crowd tonight with NXT. Best crowd ever in the history of ever. Ever. I ever. Welcome to the Instant Classic Wrestling Podcast, the only podcast that is always an Instant Classic. But for real though, that crowd was amazing. Uh, they they literally chanted everything, everything. Um, the whole show was awesome. Um, you know there was there were some things that made me sad, uh, and I have no idea what the hell WWE's thinking with certain matches that ended the way that they did that involved tag teams and belts and not changing of belts in tag team matches. And what's wrong with you anyway? Um, any just thoughts about the show in general before well, we get into it? Well, first off, did you break anything? I, I know you promised on the prediction show that you were going to Connecticut. I'm surprised you're still in Pennsylvania right now. It looks like you're still in Pennsylvania from what I can see. But you said you were going to Connecticut. You were going to break stuff. Maybe you're waiting until tomorrow. Got to get some rest. You know, got to get that energy up. You know, maybe eat some spinach and whatnot. You know, it, what's, what's going on? What's the report from uh, Connecticut? Well, I mean, I, I, I'm planning on going to Connecticut, but what I, I want to do is I want to go during business hours so I can go in the building and break shit. You know, I don't want to just do it outside. I want to go in there. You know, hopefully, you know, Triple H is there. Uh, maybe, you know, I don't know what he's doing. Hopefully he's there. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to cause as much of a scene as I can. I, You know, I could go now, but, you know, it's late. It's dark outside. It's not going to be as effective. You know, it's not. there's not a lot of people there, you know. Uh, but yeah, it it will happen, you know. Heads will roll. Okay, okay. Um, and to address this crowd, yes. Um, I I think just UK crowds in general are some of the greatest crowds. I was talking to uh Sharia, and I was like, you know, you guys fans wise are like some of the greatest fans I've ever heard in my life. And uh, she was like, yeah, I know. <laughs> and I was like, okay, a, a little that's a little much, but uh, but uh, you know, like they really are. They're really vocal. Um, and maybe it's because they don't get a lot of mainstream wrestling all the time. Like it's it's not like like WWE is in America all the time. I I know Justin mentioned this in his review earlier. You know, um, WWE is in America all the time. But when you go to the UK, it's it's just it's it's special to them. Which I I kind of feel that, that that's kind of how the uh, WrestleMania crowd feels as well, and the uh, the post WrestleMania crowd, the uh, at the Raw after WrestleMania crowd kind of feels like it's a special moment, so they get a little bit more riled up. But I, I feel like I, I wish there were more events in the UK. I love wrestling events in the UK. I think they're they're one of the top five crowds, you know, um, in you know in the history of wrestling. I feel like yeah. That's that's one thing I've always kind of wondered what it's like to be a, specifically a WWE fan from other countries uh, because WWE is a, a U.S. based promotion um, and you know we're ninety percent of the year they're within the United States they do do you know U- European tours and stuff like that but that's only a couple weeks out of the year. Um, so it, I, I always wondered, you know, what, what it's like to be a, a fan abroad, you know, um, but it, I, I, I imagine it would be kind of similar to being a, a fan of like New Japan, uh, and stuff like that, you know, um, not as, you know, a, a little bit bigger scale because, you know, WWE obviously is, you know, the, the granddaddy of them all, uh, as far as promotions, at least, you know, worldwide, um, I, I feel like, but getting into this show, um, as usual, uh, for some reason, when I wrote that out, I wrote as usually, because I can spell and make sentences that make sense, I don't know, as usual, TakeOver opens with Triple H, um, it's kind of a thing that they've been doing with uh, TakeOver, is he, he kind of opens the show. He says that Sunday he got his ass kicked, uh, but it's not the first time. It sure as hell won't be the last time, but he'd have had to be dead for him to miss TakeOver, um, which was kind of cool. I, You know, I, I like that he kind of, you know, it is out of the authority 
kind of gimmick when he is at TakeOver or when he comes to TakeOver, which is cool, you know, because deep down, I, I, I love Triple H. You know, I grew up with Triple H. He was one of my favorite wrestlers growing up. And, you know, it's fun to hate him on Raw and, you know, SmackDown and stuff like that. But it's cool to have him, you know, be that, that you know, the, kind of the founder of NXT and, you know, supporting it still, um, which is cool because it is kind of his baby. His, it was his idea and everything. Um, and then we got a pretty good video package, basically, just kind of showing all the feuds um, and all the matches that we will see tonight. Um, any thoughts on either the opening? Um. I definitely like the Triple H, the Triple H opening. Um, I, I've always liked the Triple H openings, and after thinking about it a little bit, um, and discussing it with Justin a little bit early on, I, I feel like you know it, it's just kind of it makes it feel a little bit more special because you know you don't see any other special event you know start out with the you know, kind of owner of the company or owner of the brand or whatever, the general manager, I guess you could say, hypothetically speaking, um, you don't see that person just out there, you know, just kind of embracing the fans, not, you know, cutting a promo, but not really cutting like a legit, like scripted, like, you know, this is how it's supposed to be, you know, we're going to have this match on the show, you know, it, it, it's just kind of something. And I think, you know, it, it kind of plays off of NXT a little bit because alternative to the main roster, um, Um, you know, early, you know, 90s pay-per-views back when, you know, the pay-per-views would open and you would hear Vince McMahon kind of talking about on that night, you know, he would be announcing the big matches and things like that. Uh, it, it just kind of reminds me of that a little bit, which I like. Um, but anyway, we open up with Asuka versus Emma. Um. I love that the ring announcer said, announced it as the women's division uh, match, not a divas match. Um, it, it's just, you know, I like that they, you know, refer to it as women, not divas, until you get up to the freaking main roster and then divas. And but um, we got uh, we got Emma, you know, looking looking all kinds of good. With them aviators, uh, I like it. I like it, you know. Um, Asuka, uh, a, a little scary, was getting into the Asuka's gonna kill you chance. I mean, she was she was dancing to it. She was getting down. I was I was I was afraid for Emma's life a little bit. I'm not I'm not gonna lie. Um, I I still can't get over how kind of quick and smooth Asuka is in the ring it's it's almost like she can't botch anything i mean uh, unless somebody is on the podcast as a guest and you know then everybody uh botches everything ever in i just botched honestly um <laughs> nice uh running i call it the rear view but it's the hip attack off of the apron by asuka um Emma did start to take some control after a uh, distraction by her partner, who shall not be named. Um, <laughs> what I predicted did come true to an extent. Emma did kind of have firm control um, for a while there. But it never really, at least to me, it never really felt like she was in complete control to a point where I thought she could actually get the win. It, it always just seemed like, you know, she was in control for a, a couple minutes, but in general, the entire match, it seemed like Asuka was still in, in firm control, you know, like she could change the, the, the momentum at any point, which um, I don't know if I really liked that much. Um, but uh, uh, 
can Oscar please, please, I just have one request. Stop hitting Emma in the beautiful face. Stop it. Stop it. It's, she's so pretty. Please stop hitting her in the face. I don't, I do not appreciate that. Um, but, uh, I actually felt like I, I didn't see as much of, and I don't know if you agreed on this, I didn't see as much of that kind of underlying awkwardness that we've talked about from Emma that we still kind of see in her matches. I, I didn't feel like we really saw that tonight, which was a, a surprising, you know, difference, and, and I liked it. But, you know, this was a really good match. Um, It wasn't, I'm not going to say it was the best match we've seen in the women's division in NXT. Um, Obviously, I, I think that's still... Uh, Bailey and Sasha Banks at, at Takeover Brooklyn, but this one was really definitely a good match to open the show. Um, thoughts on the match? Yeah, yeah. Um, Oscar versus Emma. Oscar versus Emma. This this was a great match. It, it was. Great match. I, first Dana. off, Emma and Dana as a unit. Are really growing on me. I think at first they were kind of awkward together, um, just because they were they, just because they're different, um, <laughs> you know. And I, I feel like they they were like tonight the entrance just looked really good. Um, Emma with the the sunglasses and and you know Dana just being Dana. It just looked it just looked really cool. Uh, for some reason I, I really liked it. Oscar yeah she was getting down to those Oscar gonna Oscar's gonna kill you chance. I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I, I agree with you that Asuka, you know, when you look at her and, and when you watch her move at times, like, she doesn't seem as quick as she really is. You know, there's some times when you're like, wait, what just happened? You know, it's like something from a movie. Like, it, it's it's really cool. Like, when you when you watch Asuka, you know, wrestle, she's really good. Um, Emma, I feel like this was a defining match for Emma. I thought... This is one of one of Emma's best matches that I've seen. She looked really good. Like you said, she didn't have that like weird awkwardness, which I think actually kind of helped her a lot um, in this match. Uh, the butterfly suplex by uh, Emma into the corner, and then the uh, Emma Mike sandwich. I love that. I love I love butterfly suplexes. Anything with the double underhook, um, you know, I'm I'm a big fan of. You know, butterfly suplexes, tiger bombs. You know, I, I'm ready. I'm ready for it. Um, Emma with the uh, nice reversal out of the Emma lock into the uh, ankle lock and then the German suplex. I was like, did Kurt Angle just come out into the building? <laughs> you know, the fans were chanting Suplex City, but I was like, you suck. You know, I, I was, I was, you know, bringing that old school Kurt Angle back out there, man. I, I, I was, I was hype. Um, you know, Oscar ended up winning with that uh, spinning round kick. When Dana did get involved, you know, it, it wasn't like to the point where it was distracting or anything. But, uh, you know, it, it was just, you know, she was there, so obviously she's going to get involved. I definitely, uh, I like Asuka a lot. I would go as far to say um, she's one of my favorites. I'm going to call her, you know, and I've already said this, so, you know, I can't take it back now. So, I, you know, I'm going to stick with it. I think she's the best. I think she's the best in the world. I think she's the best in WWE, and I, I think she's the best in the world. Personally, it's just my personal opinion. You know, I, I think I think she's really good. Like, just how fluid she is, how she can change speeds on a dime. She's just really good. Um, I haven't seen, you know, I, I've seen a lot of impressive women's wrestlers, especially coming out of NXT, even in TNA. But Asuka might be, I mean, I would like to see an Asuka Gail Kim match. I think that would be one of the greatest things I've ever seen in my life. But uh, Asuka might be the best in the world. As far as women's wrestling is concerned, that's just my personal opinion. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, that's about it. You know, I, I ended with a bold statement there. You know, I don't know if it was that bold. It was, it was pretty true. But have you seen Alexa Bliss? I mean, uh, Alexa Bliss is probably one of the best looking in the world, but I, I'm talking more so in the ring, you know, and, and Oscar's not a bad looking chick, you know, you know, she may not come off as the, you know, wham, wham, I don't know, I don't know how to describe, <laughs> you know, I don't know how to describe it, but you know what I'm saying, like, she might not come off like that, but 
you know, she ain't terrible. I like Oscar personally. One of my favorites. <laughs> Wham blam. That's how we're gonna describe it from now on. <laughs> Wham blam. Alexa Bliss coming out with the Wham Blam. I have no idea what that is, but okay, we're gonna go with it. Um, next moving on from that awkward I don't wham blam, uh and if you say flippity dippity is better. Uh, um they showed uh, Finn Balor arriving earlier in the night with his boys, Cass and Enzo. You know, they tight, they tight. Uh, and then they showed Joe arriving a little bit later alone because he has no friends. It's, it's actually quite sad. It's so sad. Um, then we see a video package, basically, of the Tag Team Championship feud. Um, I like that they showed... You know, even really early clips of Enzo and Cats, like back when they first started, you know, tagging together. You know, um, that that was really cool. Um, any thoughts on either, you know, Finn and his boys, or you know, the lack of friendship that Joe has, uh, or the video package? Hey, you know, Joe doesn't need friends. You know, he is ready. He was ready for the night. Re- you could even say ready, willing, and able. You know with Samoa Joe uh for tonight, you know, but uh you know, I, I thought I thought it was pretty cool to see Finn walking in there with uh Cass and Enzo, you know. I, I thought it, it was just kind of cool to kind of see the scenery too um of of London. So I was excited. Yeah. Next we get uh, the NXT Tag Team Championship match. Enzo and Cass the rightful tag team champions with Carmella, the beautiful Carmella, versus Dash and Dawson, the cheaters that don't deserve the titles. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give DJ this match because, because uh, it, it, it made me sad. Uh, I, I'm gonna have to go through years of therapy, um, and it made me sad. So, take it away. Alrighty. So, Enzo and Cass versus Dash and Dawson for the NXT Tag Team Championships. You know, when Enzo and Cass come out, I always get a little hype. And and I was a little upset um, just going in. I was a little upset going in because I was like, we might not get, you know, the soft tonight because they, they're trying to be all serious, Enzo and Cass. But we got it anyway, and I was hyped. I was ready. You know, I was up on my feet, you know, running around, you know, tripping over cords and stuff. But you know what? I was hyped nonetheless. Um... You know, Enzo with his promo was not playing around tonight. Nice little uh, leg sleep. Leg- Diving DDT too, I liked it. Dawson uh, goes after the knee of Cass, just as Cass really. The ring, we get a chat machine from the top turnbuckle by Dash and Dawson for the win, and you're still you're in a champions Dash and Dawson. Obviously, Enzo and Cass are over. They're o- if they're over in London, they're over on Raw. <laughs> you know, like it does. Like like if they're over all the way across the pond, they're obviously going to be over when they get to the main roster. So I. I don't even know if they really need the tag team titles because they're so over, but I was expecting them to win. They've been there forever, and like it seems like they've had chance after chance after chance and haven't gotten them yet, and I'm still confused about it. And, you know, where do you go with Dash and Dawson now? Because I feel like right now, Dash and Dawson, I like the characters that they have, but they really don't have a, 
a true direction yet. They don't really know where they want to be. And that's kind of similar with Blake and Murphy. I feel like the last two tag team champions we've had for NXT really haven't had gimmicks you could really truly get behind. So I, I, I was hoping that maybe Cass and Enzo would win this and that would set up something with Dash and Dawson and uh, Blake and Murphy so then they can kind of build off of each other as far as characters are concerned and they can kind of find find something to build off of because right now they just I just really don't see it. I don't see anything from them. I, I love the in-ring work of both of the teams but as far as gimmicks are concerned and characters are concerned I just I, I'm not I'm not getting it. But, uh, you know, I, I'm hoping Enzo and Cass eventually get the NFC titles. I just don't know what they're going to do with Enzo and Cass at this point. Like, they, it's not like they don't have the experience. It's not like they're not ready. You know, they obviously have the chemistry and everything. I, I don't know if they're going to get, like, a random call-up without getting a tag team title run or something. I'm, I'm just not sure. I don't know what they're doing. Uh, but, Casey, any thoughts on this match? You know what? I, I, I figured out what they're going to do. Uh, I know exactly what they're going to do. Enzo and Cass are so over. They are so over. They are just going to bring them right up to the main roster without the NXT titles. They are so over that they are just going to have the new day and Enzo and Cass the tag team titles. That is how over they are. They are just going to hand them the titles out of pure respect. That is that is exactly what. But no, I have no idea what WWE is thinking. Um, nobody wants Dash and Dawson as the champions. Dash and Dawson fans don't want Dash and Dawson as champions. They're just, I, they're they're you know, they're like Blake and Murphy, like DJ said. They they don't have enough of a gimmick or character to to get behind. They're, you know, I, I, I do like their sort of kind of throwback style, you know, smash, smash mouth kind of style, but I, I, you know, that only brings you so far and it gets boring after a while. Um, I, I, you know, I couldn't see them going up to the main roster right now and, you know, doing anything except for, you know, occasionally being thrown into, you know, triple threat tag team matches on, like, pre-shows. Do you, do you feel like if they let them talk more, it would help? Because, obviously, they're just, right now, basically, they're just the typical heel tag team, it seems like. And I feel like if they let them talk a little bit more, like, maybe that would help? Because we really don't know what they are. Like, Justin calls them the mechanics, you know, you're going with the old school style. We really, like, I don't have a clue what they are. You know, um, they... We just don't know where where they're going, what they are, and maybe if they let them talk some more, I don't really know what what they could do with them. I mean, feud them with Blake and Murphy, and then they can build off of each other. But I mean, I don't even know if that would work because I mean, you know, you can take two blank canvases and smash them together. Doesn't mean you're gonna get anything out of it. Um, well, they're not exactly you know. blank. Though, like, like, I mean, there's like a, a little bit here and a little bit there, and if you mix them together, sometimes you get a masterpiece. I'm just saying, just, just letting you know. I mean, Thoughts. I, I don't know. I just, I don't know if you know doing something like that would help. Um, I don't know. Like I was saying with Blake and Murphy a, a while back, if maybe if you split them up and have them work singles, uh, I mean, that's what they did with Jason Jordan and Ty Dillinger. Uh, and, and at least for, you know, Jason Jordan, that worked out. You know, he's in a new tag team now, but, you know, I mean, that Ty Dillinger wannabe, I mean, nothing. Wait, wait a minute. Wanted. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Casey. I'm just saying. So when uh, when the referee was counting people out, and he would get to nine, and you know the London people would skip up ahead of number, and they got to ten. They went crazy. So there's a little bit of love for Ty Dillinger even in London. You just don't get it yet. That's that's all it is. You're just not on the bandwagon yet. They were just excited for the count out. Who's excited for a count out? Who's excited for a count out? Tell me. Name one person. They 
they, they were just teaching him how to count. He was counting slow. That's what it was. You know, he needs to get that, that cadence right. Uh, that's that's what that was. I mean, even though it was against somebody, I didn't want to get counted out. But it's okay. Um, moving on. We, since we had that long discussion about, the, you know, Dawson and Dash and Buddy and Blake and Alexa like for this. Huh. Oh. Alright, um, we, next we get to see, um, Bailey and Carmella arriving earlier that day, uh, even though we had already seen Carmella, which was a little bit weird, but, um, uh, then you know, we get the, uh, Nia Jax video package, kind of similar to the one that we got, you know, for eight months before her debut, um, but I, I liked it. It was it was pretty cool. It was it was eight months. Her debut was like eight months. It was it, we had to wait so long, so long. It was forever. I didn't think she was ever gonna come, and then she came, and I was underwhelmed to be honest. But I mean, she is a huge. Fine, fine. Huge. Don't say huge. Huge. <laughs> <laughs> Any thoughts on? Bay Mella arrived into the arena or the video package. Yeah, this caught me off guard. I had already seen it from the pre-show um, because it's like my ritual to watch a, the pre-show before the uh, actual show, even if I don't watch it live. So, so uh, you know, I had already seen them coming in, but it was just weird, like, seeing Carmella out there in the ring and then seeing her come back in. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> you know, it was just weird. Like, obviously you knew it wasn't live, but like the way they were presenting it to you, like made it feel like it was live a little bit. <laughs> so it was just, it was just weird. Um, I like Nia Jax personally. Um, you know, I I have an appreciation for the uh, larger in stature wrestlers. Some of them, you know, I like Bull Dempsey. You know, he's my boy. You know, so Nia Jax, she in the club, not the my boy club, because technically, you know, she don't she don't have. The, the prerequisites, you know, to get in. But, you know, my girl. That is incredibly sexist. That she's in the, be, she's uh, in the my, my girl club, though. Like, I, I have two separate clubs, you know. And, uh, uh, okay. I, I get it. Anyway, moving on before, you know, we get into, you know, gender roles and segregation, which, you know, you shouldn't have. You should have, just have one club. The club, that's it. That's all you, you should have. I mean, why why you gotta split the genders? I don't know why. But we see last month when um, Corbin and Apollo Crews uh, basically began their feud. Uh, we got a little bit of a video package on that. Any thoughts on that before we get into the match? Um, not really. This was the second time I'd seen it, so not really. I just wanted to get to the match. All right, so we get Apollo, or actually, Baron Corbin came out first. So we got Baron Corbin versus Ruhan, I mean, Apollo Crews. 